As of recently, I've been pretty obsessed with digital horror. Analog horror has its merit and is still incredibly riveting. The medium of VHS just doesn't hit that nostalgia nerve for me the way that digital horror can. Be it online MMOs, Valve titles, or Minecraft. These are all things that I grew up with and seeing them morphed into something unholy truly gets me on edge. While working on my deep dive of Chess Kids Archive, a lost media ARG based on an old kids website, I became enamored with the prospects of digital horror based around Adobe's Flash program. I've compiled three projects that utilize Flash aesthetics in a unique way, some of which are old, some of which are new, but they all increase in horror as the video progresses, with our first project being Bugbo. A two-part series so far by the YouTuber Ben Silly. I have to preface this by saying Bugbo is not a horror project by any means, but its inclusion is not a mistake. Our first episode, set in stone, Bugbo introduces us to his friends, Gradient Joe, who is the smartest of the group but doesn't like to speak, and Gerbo, the not-so-bright spider friend. Gerbo is collecting rocks with no rhyme, no reason, and Bugbo thinks this is simply absurd so they come up with a plan to build a stone structure. However, Gerbo's rocks are too small, so they must visit the stone merchant. My biggest stones are what you desire. You must pay a hefty fee of 150 shells. No. Excuse me? I'm not doing that. Well, away with you then. It's in troubling times we must all ask ourselves, what would Gradient Joe do? Gradient Joe would do one of the following. Steal the stones, challenge the merchant to a duel, or simply attempt to make a deal with him. A deal? A deal? A deal? Ah! The merchant turns into a pile of big rocks, which our trio decides is now theirs, and begins the construction of the stone structure. Oh, cool. Now what? We're finished, Gerbo. We can rest. Yay! Gerbo rests upon the stones before noticing some markings that begin to glow. This summons the stone wizard Inepta, who turns himself into a stone. Never change, my friends! Never change! Rounding out the episode, another friend, Hoppo, joins the trio, and Bugbo bids us farewell. We'll be seeing you next time. So long, friends. <laughs> The second episode of Bugbo, titled Under the Oak, we have an intro of all the characters and a fun little Bugbo logo before getting into the episode. Gerbo is sitting under a nice tree where Bugbo appears and doesn't like the tree, so he tells Gradient Joe to cut it down. Big tree, I think. I don't like it. I want it gone. Joe, cut it down. <laughs> oh, man. The Bandicam logo falling is such a fun little touch right here. Under this tree reveals a hole with a sign stating, fun down here. Bugbo pushes Gradient Joe down the hole before jumping themselves. Well, no time like the present. <laughs> the trio are met with a rundown circus. They meet the hollowed clown who explains this place used to be the greatest in all the land, but after an incident with the mayor tripping on a ball, he banned all circuses, and the hollow clown moved his circus under the oak tree as it's the only life he'd ever known. The trio comes up with the idea that if Gradient Joe ran for mayor and won, he could make circuses legal again. They set up an election day for tomorrow, and as tomorrow comes around, Herbo brings up a pretty big problem with their plan. Wait, Joe has to give a speech to get everyone's votes, right? Correct. He doesn't talk. This leads into my favorite joke of the entire series. As you may know, an early vote is being held here today. Hey, you can't be here. I'm giving a speech. No, you won't. Mr. Mayor disqualified. Gradient Joe wins by default. Gradient Joe makes circuses legal again before a celebration occurs until... <laughs> Rounding out our final episode in the series so far. 
Okay, so why did I choose to include this? Bugbo is a fairly recent project, with the first episode being released in August of this last year. Ben Silly has managed to create something in the modern age that feels ripped straight from my childhood on Newgrounds. Bugbo perfectly encapsulates the uncanniness of early Flash animation, the stiff, jagged movements of the characters, the dead-eyed stares and limited range of expressions the characters are capable of, which always leaves the viewer feeling like something just isn't right, even though you know it's not a horror project. Combine this with the occasional weird distortions and dramatic pauses for peak comedic effect, and Ben Silly has truly managed to capture the range of emotions you'd feel while watching an early Flash animation. And I just implore you to go watch this series because it is incredibly impressive how well he's managed to execute this, as well as the humor just being right on point. Poochie and Pansy The first episode uploaded in 2009 is from a very unique time on YouTube where almost everything was a screamer. The rocking chair ghost, the scary maze game, Michael Jackson ghost caught on camera, and those are just a few of the big ones at the time. I feel a lot of Gen Z's childhood trauma originates from this era on YouTube, and Poochie and Pansy definitely contributed to my own childhood trauma. And me seeing a cute pair of MS Paint animated dogs supposedly from a children's show, yeah, my 11 year old mind was clicking that video. The first episode of Poochie and Pansy, The Quest for the Midnight Crown, starts with the narrator introducing a pair of puppies to us, Poochie being the brown dog and Pansy being the gray with the pink bow. It's notable to mention that the audio in this video is so low that you really have to crank up your volume to even hear it. One day, Poochie had something very important to tell Pansy. One day. Poochie had something very important to tell Pansy. Poochie explains how he had a really weird dream the night before. Pansy also had a weird dream, and as Poochie talks about a kitten who an evil witch trapped in her tower, using him to find the Midnight Crown, both Poochie and Pansy realize they had the same dream. They conclude the kitten must have been sending them a dream message and needs help, so they set out to Suffer Dark, where all the evil witches are from. But first, they must travel through Batwing Cave. Once there, they meet Freddy the Fly, who offers his help, where the video hits us with a screamer and ends. It's me, Freddy. I thought you guys could use my help. Let me show you the way to- The second episode is a jumbled mess of letters and numbers, and the episode is similarly distorted, with the title censored and the characters glitching. The video then takes on a live action role which correlates with the ARG for this series around the time, but I'll discuss that further towards the end of this section. Moving along to part 3, The Witch's Bargain, the opening title track is now black with a red sky in the background with the intro music more sinister, before reverting to normal. Something has happened in the episode in between this one. Pansy is now trapped hanging in a cage in what we can assume is the witch's lair. The witch appears. Welcome, Poochie. If you ever want to see your little girlfriend alive again, you will do exactly as I say. You sit right where you are, and I'm going to come over there and take your eyes. Pansy pleads for Poochie to not let the witch take his eyes, but he says he doesn't know how else to get her down. Before we see what happens, we get more live action footage for the ARG. And finally, the end screen with the text, you are alone, but you don't know it. The three videos we've talked about so far are actually all unlisted. Everything left of the series on the channel is heavily related to the ARG, which I'm not going to get into in this video, as it has been ended for a long time and a lot of the pages are no longer online. However, if you would like me to cover it, let me know in the comments as I do try to read all of them. Okay, I lied, there's actually three other videos on the channel that I want to discuss, and it's the whole reason that Poochie and Pansy is in this video to begin with. From November 9th, 2019 to just this past Halloween of 2022, Poochie and Pansy has been brought back. These being remasters of the previous three videos we just discussed, with updated visuals and audio. However, the jump scares, distortions, and ARG elements are removed. They're just normal videos now. The most replayed scene in the first part is the Firefly Cave scene. I thought you guys could use my help. Let me show you the way to Sufferdark. 
There's something so jarring about this video now, a video I remember vividly scaring me as a child, now updated with all of the scares removed. It plays into like this repressed memory feeling and it has the uncanniness of Flash like I discussed with Bugbo. Clearly I'm not the only person who thinks this. Moving to part two, Danger in the Dark, we have a completely unseen episode leading to the events of them being captured by the witch. Freddy the Firefly greets our pups as they thank him for showing up to light the way through the cave. As they walk through the cave, Freddy says something that tips off Poochie. Follow me, stay close, and watch out for rock bats. Poochie tells Pansy that rock bats can change their shape, so they better keep their eyes peeled if they start seeing doubles, which prompts Poochie to interrogate Freddy. Hey Freddy, do you still have that golden seashell we found on Longway Road? Yeah, I love how shiny it is. It wasn't golden. It was rainbow color. That's not Freddy. This is bad. Next tunnel on the right. Let's make a break for it. The narrator then cuts in as we're shown Poochie and Pansy being chased in the dark by the rock bat Freddy, where Poochie says something pretty interesting. I can't see anything. I wish I had better eyes. The pair continues running before stumbling across the real Freddy. Don't worry, Freddy. We'll get you out of here. No, get out. It's We then cut to black as Poochie wakes up in the witch's lair, saying the rock bat's venom must have knocked them out before the episode ends, taking us to our final part. Part 3, The Witch's Bargain. The episode goes the same as before. The witch tells Poochie he must give up his eyes to save Pansy. However, the video doesn't stop when she takes his eyes like before. Instead, we're actually shown her removing it. <coughs> After this, we're treated to an extra scene of Pansy crying. And as she cries, this sort of purple beam rings out around her before the to-be-continued screen appears, rounding out the series up to this point. And that is actually the end of what I have to show you regarding this series. Poochie and Pansy is in an incredibly unique spot right now, where the series was originally made to be a recruitment for an ARG at a time when ARGs weren't nearly as big as they are today. And through the popularity of Screamage at the time, I feel the series got inundated by a whole slew of children who rather seeing the ARG in this series just saw it as another scary video on the internet. And while you're incredibly likely to see Poochie and Pansy in a Gen Z trauma discussion, you're not as likely to see it in an ARG discussion. A bit of a curse of being too ahead of its time. However, I think this is where Poochie and Pansy really has the opportunity to shine now. The original series no longer works on a modern audience. The jump scares are kind of cheap and the visuals are a little bit silly. What it does have though is a whole group of adults and teens who grew up being traumatized by its original run. A demographic of individuals who are now feeling incredibly nostalgic about these moments in their childhood, as well as having a brand new emerging genre of internet horror, digital horror, a genre based on nostalgia from these early years on the internet early years that Poochie and Pansy existed in, with the first remaster subverting audiences' expectations by removing the scares, which in turn somehow made it more uncomfortable to watch than the original. I feel like if the creators played their cards right, they could breathe new life into an ARG involving this series. Although that may not be their intentions, as I am well aware of the technician arc of this ARG, which I believe is still currently running. Regardless, I wish the creators the best of luck in their endeavors, and this is merely my own two cents. Okay, time for the heaviest hitter yet. Lacey Games is a series of two videos, so far, made by the incredible animator Ghost Tundra. Lacey Games appears to be an early 2000s Flash game website for girls, with the mascot of Lacey being the front for this site. Before we jump into these videos, I must warn you that this series does get very dark, but it is definitely one of my favorite digital horror pieces I've found so far. And with that, let's watch the first video, Lacey's Wardrobe, Lost 2006 Flash Game. We get an opening splash screen of Lacey. Clicking play, we have the instructions. Lacey has a busy day today. In the morning, she will attend a picnic in the park. Then, in the afternoon, she must go shopping. Finally, she will have a date tonight with the cutest guy. 
but there's only one problem. She has no idea what to wear. Can you help Lacey put together the cutest outfit for each situation? As we click play, we get a single inverted frame, revealing the text, Help Lacey. We go through the options, picking clothes for the picnic. Once at the picnic, however, we see a man's face in the background stalking Lacey. The audio glitches out as he says, I love you, Lacey. We now have to get Lacey ready for the mall. While she's getting ready, the music cuts and a phone rings. The face from earlier now watches Lacey from her window. The room now darkened and his breathing is loudly heard. We then go to the shopping mall before Lacey disappears and the text, please help, pops up once more. Following the text, he's going to kill me. Now nighttime, Lacey needs to prepare for her date. The music is now much less friendly and we can audibly hear a knock repeating over and over. The text on the clothing option appears saying, there is a gift on your doorstep. Clicking the text brings a gift that when opened, and another phone can be heard ringing. Lacey, I'm here. I'm here. Did you get my gift, Lacey? Did you like it? I'm here. Open the door, my darling. Open the door. Open the Whoa. No! As we get Lacey ready, she begs us, please don't make me go outside, please, please. The text reads, what have you done? As the screen cuts to black, we hear crunching, a man breathing, and a heartbeat. We're shown pieces of Lacey one by one, before we're met with the man stalking Lacey. Disturbing secret ending found in 2007 flash game, Lacey Diner. The video starts with a loading screen and our recorder stating, Hey guys, today I wanted to show you a very weird secret I found in one of those old Lacey flash games. I ended up coming across an ending I'd never seen and well, you'll see, let's start. We get another instruction screen before being taken to the game. Our recorder notes the game is normal so far but notice the time limit in the corner. It's such a long amount of time for simply dragging ingredients into the bowl, but it's probably so kids will have an easier time winning. They speed up the video to run down the clock, and things get a little uncomfortable as the clock ticks down. The recorder saves it at the last second and we go through giving the orders to the customers. We're then shown the good ending screen. Before, the recorder restarts the game, allowing the time to fully run down. We get a woman screaming and a few frames of this image of Lacey in a decrepit house and the text reads, stupid, useless, slow, whoa, failure. We're then shown the restaurant empty. We took too long and the customers left. We're then shown a screen with Lacey sad before being taken to a photo of the outside of the restaurant. More text appears reading, this is all I have and the customers are hungry and unforgiving. We're then shown an alley in more text. If I fail, I see no other option than 
and then a photo of a home and the flashing text that suggests Lacey is going to delete her save file. The recorder appears again saying this clearly isn't for kids and we're skipping to the next day because it just gets worse from here. On day two we let the timer run out again. We get some flashing images with some different sets of poetic texts, presumably encompassing some of the lore of Lacey. We're shown the empty restaurant again, as well as the screen of Lacey sad. However, it's missing most of its text, and as Lacey disappears, we get some more dialogue. Why can't these Whoa. bastards just wait three minutes for their Whoa. food? I'm trying my hardest and yet I'm almost running out of money to survive. This isn't fair. It isn't fair at all. It isn't fair. I hate all of them. I hate all of them. Tomorrow, I'm gonna give them something to eat alright. They'll face what they did to me. We're then shown Lacey now disfigured in a rundown kitchen, with various repulsive ingredients on the table. Cigarette butts, cockroaches, glass, as well as uncle. I'm gonna speed run through this part as I'm worried about getting smitten by the YouTube gods, but basically every time you add an item, we get a very stylized outline with lore details as to how these things correlate to Lacey's own trauma. Up until we add the last ingredient, uncle. We then see the abomination we've created, censored for public health concerns, and go to feed it to our patrons who have now all morphed into grotesque figures of their former selves. My favorite is this businessman here. After feeding everyone, we get a flash screen of establishment closed due to sanitary violations, and we get another glimpse at the restaurant with a closed sign now. Lacey sits outside smoking a cigarette before stating, This is it then. Back to the alley, we have a censored blob with the text, Bad Ending. We get a flash of a woman who appears to be hooked up to her computer, and then a flash of her arm, as we're taken back to the title page. In the final frame of the video, we get a woman with the text, I'm in heaven. And that was LaceyGames.com so far. Ghost Tundra has made such a stylistic, horrifying set of videos so far. I truly cannot recommend going and checking these videos out yourself enough as they're incredibly underrated, especially since I left a lot of the juicy bits of lore for you to go find yourself. But just be warned, the story is very dark, but that's also part of what makes it so terrifying. Thank you so much to my Rat King Patreon, Bohan Thedosievich. If you'd like to support the channel and get some bonus content, my Patreon starts at only a dollar, where you'll get full access to behind the scenes, bloopers, video diaries. The link for that is in my description. I truly think that Flash deserves some bigger highlights going forward into the future of digital horror, and I can't wait to see more from the projects that I discussed, as well as the genre as a whole. Anyways, I've been your host, Pat Ratrick, and until next time, what would Gradient Joe do? Life.